So all I need to do now is take out some of these uh, MDF slots, put them on the top of my panel and draw around the cutout shapes that everything slots into. Then I can go in with a jigsaw and cut those out and we should have a perfect copy of one section of the sofa but much smaller if everything goes well, which will fit perfectly in between our armrests that we built last year. <laughs> so let's get on with that. Here is how the part I sit on fits onto the side humps of the corner sofa section. You can kind of see it hooks around that hump so that it doesn't slide side to side. I may have showed you this before, but here it is again, just to remind us of how this thing is gonna work. And again, another reminder of the reason that I'm doing this is to use it for storage. This is the bottom part of the corner sofa. And here is the same part for my seat. Obviously, mine is a lot smaller. I don't need a whacking great armchair. I just need something that fits in between the pre-built arms. So here we're gonna draw these cutouts onto the board. Then we'll go here and here. I'll line up the corners trying to make sure everything's lining up nice and straight each time and draw the spaces onto the board. It's pretty simple. Here's a close-up. Here it is next to the side piece. I've marked out where the hump it slots onto will be. That first line is wrong. I need to use that slightly wider line so that it's nice and snug when it hooks around. And here it is complete. So it's kind of a replica, a scaled down replica of the corner sofa part. So here we have the side piece from the corner sofa section laying on top of my side piece. And this slot here is not going to be needed. That connects different parts of the corner sofa together and we're just making one seat. So we don't need that bit. Also something worth noting is the side piece does not run straight. It goes down at an angle. So here you can see my piece underneath is perfectly straight and the piece on top, there's a small gap at the front between my piece and this piece and there's a larger gap at the back so it it sort of sinks down for comfort I guess and it, when you think about it yeah it kind of does look a bit more comfortable that way I'll probably copy that too and you can see if I lay the pieces out like this it's like we're looking at it from a side angle now the longer piece would be the backrest and the other piece obviously I'm going to be sitting on that the backrest is going to slot into the side piece with this angled cutout. You can see here, it just kind of slots in there. And we've got these, um, I'm going to call them humps, but there's probably a more technical name for them, but humps is going to do for me. The bottom part, the seat bit, is going to sort of hook onto those. And with the bit that I sit on not screwed down, that means I can lift it up and put something inside the box. Uh, again, I'm not sure what I'm going to put in there, probably controllers or something like that. So, four cutouts on the seat and two humps on each side, so four in total. And I'll show you here on the side piece, one at the back. And one at the front. Now my sides are shorter than the ones on the corner sofa, so I kind of have to figure out where I'm going to put these humps, but it's not really a problem. I'm just going to line them up with the cutouts on the chair. And here's how the seat sits on the corner sofa. And this is the design that we're going to copy. This little part here hooks around the hump and sort of stops it sliding side to side. So you don't, you know, you don't want the the seat flying off and, <laughs> and, fall, and you fall off the chair. No, so that kind of stops that. 
Here I've marked out where I want the hump to be. The first one is right next to that angled cut for the backrest. And the second one is almost on the end of the side piece. Here's a closer view. I made the first line there too small. I want to go on this second line so that when it hooks around that, it's just nice and snug. Now I'm lining up the angle of the seat using the corner sofa side piece and I'm going to draw around the humps. Now I've marked out where I want them to be. Kind of out of shot here, but here's a closer view. That's a bit better. Hopefully you can see the pencil mark there. Here's the slot for the backrest. I was thinking about making that a bit deeper than on the corner sofa because my backrest is a little bit taller. But I think what I'm gonna do is just keep it the same and then try it out. And if it feels unstable, it feels like it you know, might come out or snap or whatever, then I'll go back and make it a bit deeper. That shouldn't be too hard to do. Okay, now I'll line up the angle again and draw around the second hump where I marked the location earlier. And then I'll mark up with pen just so it's extra clear when I go to saw it up. Here's the complete markings for the first side. The second side will be a duplicate of this, so there's no need to show you that really. It's exactly the same. So we've got two of these. I've got an angle cut out for the backrest, two humps for the seat, and an angle for comfort. This is how the backrest sits. We're looking at it as if we're side on to it. And here is how it will slot into the side piece. There are two small cutouts on the backrest. We're going to do the same as with the bottom part and draw around those. And again, the size is slightly different. My backrest is narrower, but it's also longer, higher. I want something that's gonna fit in between my armrests. But I also wanted some head support and neck support which the corner sofa doesn't offer. That sort of cuts off, I don't know, somewhere halfway up my spine. I want this to support my head. That's why my backrest is taller, obviously. Here's a close-up of the cutout shapes on the backrest, which slot into the side parts, angled cutout. And hopefully, that will stop it sliding around side to side in the same way that the bottom part of the chair hooks around the side pieces and stops that from sliding side to side. I need to make sure that it rests on the back part of the box that everything's sitting on. If you're struggling to follow along with any of this, please don't worry. In the next Elite Dangerous related video I upload, I will be cutting these pieces up, possibly assembling them, depends on the length of the video. Um, but things will become a lot clearer when I start doing that and you, you'll be able to see what it is that I'm trying to do if I'm not um, explaining it to you in an easy to understand way. I'm doing my best but it will be easier to show you is what I'm trying to say. I've mentioned it before but the focus now with the Elite Dangerous playlist is to keep working on this cockpit until it's done. And again, I have been sidetracked trying to give you some variety in the playlist with gameplays and tips and things like that. But that's meant the cockpit has sat there unfinished and people that watch those videos have wondered if it's ever gonna be finished or just left half done. And I've been sitting on a dining room chair, uh, which is really uncomfortable way to play Elite Dangerous. <laughs> So I'm happy that we're finally moving a, along with this and I'll be able to sit in comfort at last. I'd also like to thank everybody that watched those cockpit videos that I made some time ago because I got a fair amount of views for those. I was quite happy with the way those went and I do hope that the same people come back and watch it completed. So please join me for the next episode of the cockpit 
series in the Elite Dangerous playlist. Have a great day. Keep gaming. Look after each other. For now, this is Commander64 signing off. Thank you.